It's time for LZ Reviews! <laughs> Let's get into fucking episode 2 of Loki, titled The Variant. Dude, this episode, like... It's, it's weird. It was a bit, like, I've never seen the character of Loki, so... Wait, low key. wait, wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I do just want to say, I think, obviously, for the fans out there, you're listening to this right now, this fucking's going to be spoilerific. Oh, we're... Fuck. Spoiler alert here. Spoiler alert! Okay. Yeah, so... I've never seen the character in such, like, I guess, like, humble place. Like, I'm surprised at such a transition, but then I'm not surprised at how it worked out. But overall, I like I like how things are starting to get a bit more fleshed out. And I was surprised by the big reveal at the end of the episode. What did you guys think? Well, I, I honestly, I think I, I, for me to go now, you know, it's, it's, you guys remember last week, if you heard our episode or you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see the uh, episode one review uh, by itself. I wasn't that big of a fan of the first episode. I gave it what I think a seven overall. This is the episode that did it for me. I'm, uh, really? I am, I'm hooked. Now I'm into this, you know, wow. I, I will say. I still I'm not as excited as I was for Falcon and Winter Soldier or for uh, WandaVision, but I'm into it. I'm, I'm very excited about it because now because like I said, the first episode was a setup, right? It's because now we're into the story, right? Like now we're like, oh, OK, like I didn't need to know what happened to Loki. I went to the theater to see what happened to Loki. Now we're fucking seeing this new experience. And I, I liked it. It's 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 cool how they're trying to explain the way they work with the time you know travel and and you know i really love the especially the scenes between loki and and which wilson it's mobius mobius yeah, right? mobius, yeah. Mobius, right? and mobius in terms of trying to figure out how to catch this loki variant right uh and and apparently i think what was interesting because because i guess for the fans for out there for them to show right because to, to tell them what it was about right that's it's about him working with more mobius in terms of how to capture this Loki variant that's been killing uh, uh, TBAs, which is how episode one ended. Uh, the, the plot doesn't really move that much further from that other than just yeah. like, seeing the paperwork and then a lot of character development between Mobius and Loki, their interactions, Loki trying to fuck them over a little bit at the beginning, right? <laughs> like trying yeah, to, <laughs> the, Mo the Mobius caught it, right? He's like, he's lying. Yeah, no, don't do what he says. <laughs> you do. You, I don't know, man. This show is another mind fuck show. Like it's kind of like WandaVision. It, it's gonna have people making all kinds of guesses. Word. Like, I mean, like there is a possibility that um, it is not a Loki variant, right? That they're chasing. There's a possibility oh. that this is another ruse. You know that somebody's pulling on Loki to to use him as a tool. And then, and then, like, you always wonder whether or not Loki actually has a plan. Like, if he really is 10 steps ahead of everything that TVA does. Like, Damn. I like that. Every episode is going to have tons of questions. You don't know. They're playing 40 chess with each other. Mobius and Loki and his variant. It's a whole shit show. And I like how they integrated, like, a scene where they go to Pompeii. <laughs> and then it, that Loki was awesome. figures out that if you're in an apocalypse scenario, then you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yo, and I love that exactly, right? Because that was Loki's detective work in terms of figuring out where is this variant, right? And then realizing that the variant can hide in apocalypses because no matter how much you fuck with time, it's all going to get destroyed because it's an apocalypse about to happen, right? And by apocalypse, we mean big catastrophic events, right? So like, for example, like Rod said, Pompeii, right? And so they went to Pompeii to test it out. That they just fucked it all up. They said who they were, like, and fucked, and and it it didn't change the timeline at all because, well, Pompeii, the 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 how much about Vesuvius, right? It's the volcano yeah. blew yeah. up and still killed everybody. So nothing changed. So that's that was really fucking cool. Also, I wanted to comment though, Rod. You said uh, that they're playing forty chess with each other, Loki, and I love that comment. You're right because. We did have those scenes where Loki saying that he's ten steps ahead, right? And he's trying to—he's a schemer, schemer, right? He's fucking, you know, it's Loki. But I love that was that one scene in the elevator where Mobius tells Loki, like, what? What does he tell him? Like, he says something like, 
look, I'm doing this because I care about you because I see a wounded kid who wants to do well. And, you know, and this is what he wants or something. And, and he wants to prove that he's better than this other Loki. Uh, or, and then he says, or I'm just saying that to fucking motivate you. Cause that's what you'll do. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, let's just pick do one. it. And I, <laughs> I pick one. And, and I love that. Cause that, exactly. That shows what you're describing. The, the chess piece that Mobius could either be genuine with him about it, or he's just doing it. Cause he knows Loki. And that's, what's going to get him to participate in this. Dude, the fucking layers in this show are ridiculous. Part of me also keeps wondering is like, why didn't you just keep one of those infinity stones? Because you're apparently stepping out into the regular reality. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is like, I don't think anybody would have noticed if you would have taken one. It's a bit of a loophole. You're like, it's like you took a paper clip. Like you could have taken the foot, like you could have taken the time stone. Ironically enough, I mean, it's all this but shit. But they, but what, but if he steps into the real world, then that stone becomes anomalous and it'll trigger their devices because that's what they find ah, they find okay, anachronism yeah, never mind. that that gem would be an anachronism I, I don't know they could do some fuckery it's, it's still yeah. like, it's still a possibility fucking feige he thought about that right Bastard. yeah and we <laughs> exactly and we still need to know how this loki variant because also i'm not i wasn't completely sure if they they kind of did they tell us in this episode that there's been other loki variants right because they yeah. had this scene where they yeah. showed us different versions of loki which for the fans out there they showed us actual um versions of that we've seen in the comic books mostly from the jason aaron run recently they showed us like a hulk type loki which was illustrated once by um uh, russell dotterman i actually don't know if that was actually in this comics before that probably but there's also like the old school biking loki there in this holographic yeah. image it looks so fucking dope, right? And, I, and it was obviously always funny to see Loki going like, but I'm 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 the best one. <laughs> and I like how it kind of turns into a thing where everyone's really trying to tell him, like, no, you're not the top Loki. Like, accept that. <laughs> like for all your grandeur and dashing handsomeness, Tom Hiddleston, you're not the top Loki. But then before we get to the reveal. We get some cataclysmic shit where clearly, like, well, like dozens upon dozens of the best way that could be described is time resetting bombs go off at the same time. So it's literally a time bomb, uh, like, goes off and this not really destroys, but it turns a straight line into something that looks like the human nervous system. <laughs> Because that's what I was thinking as it happened. I was like, oh, shit. Word. Exactly. For the fans, because this is the scene, right, what was leading to the... They're trying to catch the variant Loki, figuring out what they're, what they're doing. And then they, they go to this apocalyptic event in, in, in the future. And then in the sort of near future, right? It was like 2050 or something like yeah. that. Where they realize that that Loki is taking... Have they, he's been stealing... They've been stealing all these... Um, uh, 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 the the time the timeline reset things and fucking drops it all over the fucking time stream the timeline, and yeah. it starts to fucking blow up and like it's, you're right, Chess. It looked like a fucking just nervous system from one little river kind of thing to blowing up like that in in the in the monitors of the TVA. He's like, what the fuck? And also like, why? What's the plan? What what are they doing? And mind you, the one thing that we're not addressing is this is like, and I just realized this now. Like, while we were talking about this, this is Endgame, not Endgame the movie, Endgame the concept type shit. Like, yo, you blew up the timeline. It's episode two. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you successfully pull off something that's technically as big as bigger than Thanos getting the Infinity Stones, which took a decade of movies. <laughs> I literally just realized that right now. In two hours, they they topped phase one. Wait, those okay, those some um, time grenade bombs, right? Didn't they all get sent to the TVA? Nah, they got sent no. to different points in time. Yeah, that's okay. why. That's why, like, um, that's why. What's it called? What the holy time stream, the sacred timeline. Um, yeah, it started. Yeah, it started to diverge in different. Okay. Like, so those are all different realities. Like yeah, so, and, she, and that's why the TVA monitors were all freaking, freaking out. Like that yeah. one dude, right, that that has fucked with Loki, was like, "What the fuck's happening? Can't believe this is all happening at the same time. Like, what to do?" Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like it's kind of like 
they were all stock traders and they saw like Black Tuesday happen. Oh, you know, shit. like the day of the Great Depression when the whole market crashed. That's what they saw. And it's like, dude, like if once again, if you think about it, considering what they turned the Infinity Stones into, they just topped all of phase one in the second episode of Loki. So what the fuck is next? Like, how is this shit going to play out? Yo, I rewatched episode one, right? Uh, Glorious Purpose. And there's a scene that I, I didn't catch the first time around, but I saw the, the second time around. So you know that office dude that tells Loki about all the stones and how they're used as um, paperweights? Yeah. Uh-huh. The office guy. When he's explaining to, uh, to uh, the, the agents, the time agents, like what's, what's going on with the escaped Loki, He's like, yeah, he told me he's going to gut me like a fish, whatever the hell that is. Yeah, he didn't know what a fish was. Right, was. right. Yeah. Yeah, what about that? So, like, you know, he's a human man. He doesn't know what a fish is, but he's speaking in English, right? So, so like, is he alien? Is he a robot? Like, is he... I'm glad you bring this up. Let's get into it. Let's, everybody put your tinfoil <laughs> fucking hats Pepe on. Let's talk about it. Yeah, because well, I've been wondering, just from a simpler standpoint, how the fuck did you become a TVA agent in the first place? Well... the same question that you just bring up. I think in this second episode, they mentioned that a little bit. The English thing, let's not talk about that. Because I think that's a classic thing. It's also like, why does Loki right. know English? Right, right. Why does Asgard- Asgardians not speak English? They covered that, though, because... Why does Gamora mentioned- speak English? Like, I don't know. I don't remember. Like, actually, no, but in this show, though, that way, I didn't mean it in that way. Like, why they speak English in space is that he said he's in a gut. Is there the fact that you don't know what fish is, but you can speak all the words? Like, there's an unusual concept. But remember that one of the agents had said in episode one, like, um, don't speak whatever in front of me. I know all the languages in the timeline. Yeah, 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 I know that. So yeah, they could yeah. learn shit at, like, infinitum. Like. Oh, so they just chose English as their main language? Fuck that. No, but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'll, anyway. I'll wait for, I'll wait for conspiracies. <laughs> no, right, no but the thing it. is, in the sec... Oh, sorry. So I'm going to provide... One is the evidence from episode two, and then second is a the theory that I just read, actually, right before the we started recording. And so, because, no, in, in episode two, there's that moment when he's having this conversation with Moby as Loki in after lunch or something like just on, on on a table and questioning like you just believe this like you just believe like where you came from right you know and because and then that's because they asked him right why do you like um so much jet skis right yeah. and he's like you know the jet skis were less fucking he's like time sucks there's so much crappy shit jet skis were actually a perfect thing of like fucking what was it like you know ingenuity and, 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 it, it, yeah it was like a perfect unification between art and ingenuity or something <laughs> yeah, exactly like and he's like i love those like it's fine but but because but he didn't at that point kind of said that he was created by the timekeepers to be a tba agent and then loki told him like really is that what you believe should you just believe that like and then like he asked him like well where, where are you from and he's like, well, you know, I'm from some, you know, giants on Jotunheim and, you know, raised in Asgard. And and then so he's like, do you hear how silly that sounds? He's like, <laughs> and, and you just believe that? So he's like, we all just believe these things, too. And so it's like, that's, I think, how they're trying to explain that. You know, they, they kind of let us to believe that's why nobody knows all these shit, because these are people who were created by the timekeepers who I guess have, if they're controlling time. They're ants, Almost, basically. Yeah, they can probably create people like that to be there. It's kind of crazy. But go ahead. Yeah, no, it's fucking bananas. But but that's what uh, Mobius said, right? And so that might explain why the other guy doesn't know fish because, like, he told Loki, like, his Loki even was like, how do you not know what fish are? And he's like, well, I've lived my life in a desk, right? So that's that's makes sense if he was just created for that. Now, tinfoil hat on, conspiracy theory. Damn, you didn't have it on yet? <laughs> no, no, because this is what was said. This is what was said oh, okay, in okay. the show, you know? It's like some people are saying that these are actually people taken from different points in time by mm. Kang. Oh! That Kang was one of the three timekeepers and then, like, took over or something and, like, fuck with them to try to make the timeline the way he wants to be. So maybe there was four timekeepers instead of three, and they got rid of Kang, and there's only, like, you know what I mean? Like, erase his image from a time or whatever. Maybe there used to be four timekeepers. And um, you just bring up a very valid point, because 
as far as them being able to create people, Rod said it was kind of crazy, but you forget that we have the Eternals on the horizon. What if, think about the scope of shit we're dealing with. What if this shit also connects with the Eternals? Because as per the comics, somebody stop me if I'm wrong. The Eternals were the people that played with human genetics to create the metahuman gene, correct? The wait, 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 wait. no, the, the, Eternals, the, the right? Eternals were not involved. Or oh, I'm thinking the about like the ones that came before that. Like, so no, you're not completely off. So this it was the Celestials, right? So the Celestials ah, okay, okay. are these godlike space aliens that came to Earth and they created the Eternals. And off of like basically they came to Earth in primitive time, grabbed humans and made them. They created two different kinds of branches. One's the Eternals and one's literally called the deviants which is i don't really understand and then they kind of they've been at war with each other and whatever but in the comic books apparently they did it's, this is through jason aaron's avengers run which we're talking mm -hmm. about heroes are born and all that and enter the phoenix that um a celestial died on earth way before any kind of like human life really existed and that his like cosmic ooze or cosmic death decay led to the creation of like meta genes and like that kind of stuff and what that's why earth is so populated with that fucking shit dude i have a oh, ew, so it's like as he was the king like the rot created meta humans yeah that's dude <laughs> that's epic um okay, so then think about it. i think in some weird way and i'm talking about right here we're trying to zoom out to the highest levels like there's no more zooming out than this like we're at the back of the setting like all this shit is connected the eternals the timekeepers, the celestials. I think that's where all this shit is going. And we're going to start to see some trickles of that. Because if you think kind of where it's going, they eventually kind of have to mention the Eternals, no? Or the Celestials in some way. It seems like it's headed that way, considering what already happened in episode two. Yo, I want to throw a quick shout out to our boy, Anley. I know he's listening right now. He's like, yo, is Mobius the, vamp, the, the renegade Loki? Damn. Like it's like because it, Loki's in this. Um, okay, so his goal, his reason for working for the TVA is because he wants to, he wants a powwow with the Time Lords, right? And then, and so does I don't know. I feel like Mobius is also working toward that. I forget that the the conversation he's having with the judge. What's her name? The uh, his homegirl. Is something that, that she R, R, R something? No. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I forgot her name. Yeah. Like it's, I think uh, I'm, I'm on it. Cause okay, what was the, what was that? Um, the mean witch's name from uh, Agatha Harkness. Agatha Harkness. Yeah. Is there any chance they're gonna pull an Agatha Harkness with this? And then at the end, he's really the one that the time mage manipulating all this bullshit. Like I don't, I don't think so because anyway, they showed shout us. Out to yeah, word facts. Shout out to Hangley. Um, shout out to random. That's random. what we call them. Dude. That's, I'm like, Anley, who you talking about? Yo, random, good looks, man. <laughs> First, uh, um, they kind of addressed that in a way when they showed us the bad variant at the end of the episode. It was a chick. It was a female. It was a wait, 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 wait. So we're, 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 we're jumping. We're <laughs> jumping to another thing. <laughs> no, but, but the building off of the, what Rod was saying, I, I think I like that. That's a good comment. That's a good comment, Anley. Thanks for sharing that, bro. Um, but actually, because along those lines, I was actually thinking that the judge is not who she says she is, yeah, which is her, her character's name is R. <laughs> Renslayer, um, which I just go So the actress, I'm going to butcher the name. The actress's name is Gugu Muntha Ra. She's a, she's a, I think she's a, a British, uh, a, you know, British actress is what it says. Um that that apparently I googled her character and it's a character named Ravana Renslayer, who seems to be an actual character in the comic books. Uh, uh that I I I don't actually don't know anything about, but I need to look into that. But 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 it's I I have that feeling that maybe she's because even for example, Mobius has never seen the Timekeepers, right? And it seems that she's the yeah. only one that has. That always feels like, I don't know, like, that feels weird. It's like, nah, dude, what's up, yeah, what's been, up with that? I've been getting the same vibes, the way that people talk about the timekeepers. It's kind of like, whatever there really is, no timekeepers. All right, I got a question for you guys. So, the timekeepers, the, the, no, not the time, the TBA, the whole space where they're at, where they're at, where is it? 
What do you guys think it is? Outside of time, bro. Yeah. Kind of like the I'd Speed Force in a weird that. way. What if you guys? So I'm thinking, is it outside of time? So outside of time, though, but it's like in the quantum realm or something like that. There are for sure seeds for Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania being planted with all the Kang rumor about maybe Kang is this uh, season's Mephisto. I don't know. Are we all going to be Kang? Yes. Kang. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm dude. Okay, but here's the here's the thing though, because. Even though we were dealing with magic, right, which kind of involves Agatha Harkness and which kind of involves Mephesto, bro, this is time travel. This is Kang's domain. Like, yeah. the whole, they don't do time travel, almost anything, unless there's a hint of Kang involved somehow. And shit, what bigger baddie would they be missing with so much potential and so much, what's the term, like carte blanche or some shit like that, you know, like creative freedom? Then Kang, if you think about it, like it's only right. Yo, word. This would be right up fucking Kang's alley, and that would be dope because then it would set it up for the for the next movies, right? For the, even the multiverse of madness, for the Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, and I think just for that, so it's funny because so uh, Jonathan Mayers, who's the actor who got cast as Kang for the Ant Man movie, he was actually like asked this directly about like is is Kang gonna make an appearance in Loki, and he <laughs> the quote is. No idea what you're talking about, which I think that's BS. Is bullshit. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's like, that's God. BS. There's no way you'd be that oblivious to that. Like, no, nope, nope. That's BS. I think that's it's that's so preposterous that that's him telling us that he's gonna appear. Like, that, I go total, like total opposite. <laughs> uh, yo, right there, I think that told me. Like, that's he's yeah. in. He's in. I mean, I wouldn't be so sure only because. All right, bear with me on this one. Mm. These shows are are integrated into the films, right? They're they're one in one. They're they're all part of the large the same narrative. world. However, however, WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier have both been somewhat inconsequential to the events that we're gonna see in the movies. Okay, now we know that we're gonna get a, a new Captain America movie. I'm sure they're gonna explain why he is Captain America at the start of that movie. And we don't necessarily know what what level Scarlet Witch is going to play or what the events of WandaVision are going to play in Multiverse of Madness. Mm -hmm. This show could be another, uh, another thing where they, they, make, they raise the stakes without necessarily touching anything that's supposed to happen in the movies. You know, like using a variant Loki as the main character, a, guy, a, a character that you could destroy if you wanted because he isn't. I'll, I'm sorry yeah. to stop you right there, right there, actually, before you say any more because apparently I got to double check if it was Kim and Feige or somebody else related specific to MCU studios, uh, the Marvel Studios, is that they people have already said from the business, which I think it was Kevin Feige that said that Loki is the show that's most most impactful for the MCU. You took the words out of my mouth, bro. Yes, the God yes. King himself might have said that. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. And, and that's what I'm hoping for. And that's why I, I've told the guys this already. This is already my favorite of the three shows. Like, I, I love it, you know, and, and I hope it has, like, big impacts. It already seems to have that. If this whole time stream thing isn't just another illusion from another, uh, like a another wizard that Loki's like going toe to toe with, if, if it is in fact himself or not, or if the TVA is legit or mm, not. Nah, I think with the variant dropped, all those fucking time bombs and them shits went off. Them shits went off. <laughs> And yeah, once and, I, and, 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 and building off of Endgame with the time travel, and that we know that a Loki from the past got pulled. So I think. The timeline and the, and the TBA are real, and that's really happening. And when they travel in time, it feels genuine. How because that'd be a mad epic illusion to be played with all these different people throughout different fucking in the way yeah. past and the future. Uh, so I think that's real. But I agree with maybe the TBA isn't all they say they are. Uh, and then this whole thing about the Loki variant may not be all uh, they they say it is, which we haven't talked about. So let's get into it, like. They finally revealed to us who the, the Loki variant that they're hunting is, and it apparently is Lady Loki. I'm going to add an asterisk to that to add, because I, I don't know, maybe I, I'll leave it at that before. I, what, what were your guys' thoughts so far? Well, I was surprised once again. It's kind of like the, the shock of all this almost breeds skepticism, because like the big thing happened. They showed who the variant. It's like it all feels like there's still somebody behind it. 
Like, that wasn't who's behind it. It felt too simple for me. Especially since we see the variant taking on other bodies. That's, exactly. what, that's what the confrontation is. It's, it's Loki against, you know, Loki, allegedly, in the bodies of multiple people just like that are just standing by, just takes them over and just keeps floating from body to body. So whether or not this, this uh, female is a variant, because, you know, because Loki's in the multiverse can be, you know, giants, women, whatever. So, I mean, that would be cool. But I, I got the same impression you got, Chaz, that it's not. Yeah, because it, it could even be like that the actual variant, it's the green force itself that's controlling the female variant. Who's not even bad. You know what I mean? Like, this shit could be layered as fuck. It felt too simple. Like, here. Boom. Timeline's blown up. Here's the variant. Yada, yada, yada. And this is going to be the most consequential show of them all. And it's only episode two. No, but that's what I love about it, right? Because I think it lets us... Because now we need to know why is she doing it, right? Why is this variant Loki doing all this? Especially all that we know about the Loki that we know and love what happened to this one right and it, and you make you bring up a good point like is she working for another loki or some or king or something else right or or the green thing being somebody else controlling her i don't think so because that's very loki ish every time he uses his powers it has to kind of look and and the thing too it's like so i added the asterisk is because i think she's not necessarily just lady loki i think she's a mix of Lady Loki, which we've seen in the in, in the in the in the comic books that happened after Ragnarok, uh, this was during the Straczynski, uh, Michael Straczynski's, and um, with Koipiel's uh, run on Thor, wonderful fucking run. Um, they all died, and Loki came back after Ragnarok after dying, but he came back in the body of the what's the, the that epic warrior from the Asgard Asgardian warrior. I mean, which one? The, uh, there's Sif? only ah, Sif, exactly. She was, uh, exactly. So oh. he came back like in kind of like in a Lady Sif's body, and that's why he was like Lady uh, uh, Loki ah, for, okay. for a minute. And so, but there was a few things in this episode that for me made me think that this Lady Loki is actually Enchantress, which is another key mm. character in the Asgard realm and the, an epic sorceress. One, she's blonde. So Lady Loki was never blonde in the comic books. Enchantress has always been blonde. Uh, and there was this one moment when she was doing this thing about switching bodies. And Loki said, that's such a good enchantment you did. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm like, you're fucking preparing me for Enchantress. And, and her magic is green. Uh-huh. Exactly. Her magic is green, which is much. Yeah, you're, that's a great point. Mm, and and like, so but like. she's not just playing the classic, the main enchantress who had a, a like a um, a, what, the guy, uh, what's his name? Co uh, Keith Keith Urban, right? Carl Urban. Uh, who, Keith who Urban played... is a country musician. Right? <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Carl Urban, right? Carl Urban, the executioner. Well, the executioner, you know, right? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Like, he was working for Hella instead of the en enchantress. Enchantress, right? exactly. Because in the comic books, Keith Urban's uh, 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 what was his name? Executioner is working with Amora, <laughs> the enchantress. But there is a Sylvie Lushton enchantress who was given her mystic powers by Loki when Loki created her as a tool for chaos in the comic books. Damn. So I'm thinking wow. that's who this is. And apparently, so, like, look, I'm not lying. When this happened, the episode dropped on Wednesday. I watched the episode during my lunch, working from home, watching it immediately went on Wikipedia. When you Googled Enchantress on Wikipedia, it said, you know, it, at the first paragraph, it said, played by... Uh, 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 Sofia Di Martino uh, version of Sylvie Lushton on Loki's Plus, and then it got deleted, and then it's not there anymore. I read Bro. it. Oh, yo, fucking, we might have legit hit our first LOZ exclusive. For some reason, <laughs> I'm all in on this theory. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Right there, Miguel got it. That's it. We're gonna get so, shot. So then it makes you it makes you wonder if it is that enchantress, if it's that version from the comic book that Loki created, which Loki created her, mm. right? Is it the one we know? Is it some other one? Is it or is it Kane? I don't know. <laughs> or is it Mobius? Isn't that name oh. the, isn't that name suspect too? Like Yeah, because I've been thinking about that the whole time. Like, that's a pretty epic name. I mean, the one Mobius I know is the one in DC, the new god from the Mobius chair. But it's Metron. like Metron. The Metron, who sits yeah. in the Mobius chair, but the term itself for the name Mobius is usually referred like 
reserve, reserved for epic ass level beings. Hell, he has like the French artist. There's the awesome French artist Mobius with this awesome Stan Lee book for Silver Surfer, amazing artist. But actually, not the not the rain on the parade is. I actually Google about it. So there is a character named Mobius in TBA. So the Damn TBA it. hasn't been such a big presence in the comic books. I think they were kind of created by Walt Simonson and, and during his and I think in, in Louise Simonson's run on Thor. And I don't know a lot about it, uh, but apparently Mobius exists. And, I, and apparently he was very prominent during a Fantastic Four series. And it's just like that. Like it's just some random white dude, agent, bureaucrat of the TBA. And so Damn it's it. like, oh, like. Okay, like, all right. So I know that's why I'm like, it's a too much of an epic name for such a like, uh, just a and listen, man, pencil and pusher. Fuck, and hot on the heels of that crazy ass theory by Miguel, which honestly I think is fucking right. I'm gonna say that. So after the reveal, right, they all jump, you know, through like, well, the bad Loki, the quote unquote main bad guy that we just got in episode two, jumps in through a time portal. And I think at that moment, Loki realizes what's at stake and he decides, big scheme, I'm going to faux betray the TVA so I can save everything in the end. Oh, I, I got that impression, too, that Mo that Mobius may have wanted him to leap through that, to follow yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Bro, yo, we're fucking... We're Pepe's. Facts. Yes. Yo, right, because they said... Not, not Pepe the Frog. Yeah, that's where he's No. Yeah, no, not, yeah. <laughs> not that one. No, yeah. it's like because the show ends epically like that, right? Like with this confrontation with this lady Loki slash enchantress, and she escapes, and then Loki escapes, and, and then the t it ends in such a cliffhanger that would be typically left for a season finale. <laughs> like it's what? it just brings up a good point. It's episode two. Yeah, you like know? what the fuck? That's the one thing I caught is like they dumped the whole load on us. It's like whoa. What's after this, then? Right. Shit. And, and also, Loki's the best performing premiere so far. And I saw a headline. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. No, that they're going to move their shows to Wednesday release moving forward. Yeah. So I think this Bro. show's doing really well. I love the theme song. I, um, I'm sure that this had been stated, stated before, but I'm going to say it now. Because I think it's actually happened now for real. Tom Hiddleston has arrived. <laughs> and I know he's been Loki in the movies. But this is just Tom Hiddleston on top of yeah. Tom Hiddleston on top of Tom Hiddleston. And it's amazing. He's, yeah, he's the reason. And, and, it's, and of course, was it Owen Wilson? What is it? Yeah, Owen yes. Wilson? Yes. Luke or <laughs> Owen? Luke oh, is, no, is, Owen. Is Luke is the star of C. Yes. Okay, <laughs> got it. But yeah, now, I, if, I don't know, if you had to choose, if you haven't, let's say, is it, it's probably not the case, but if you haven't seen any of the Marvel shows yet, and you got to choose between all three. I would say, hands down, go with Loki. And it's because, like, Tom Hiddleston is just nailing it. He's great in the movies. Oh, yeah. He steals every scene he's in. But in this one, I just love his showcase of it. He's, he's like, speaking Latin in, in episode two. I love Max. it. And his hair is amazing. It's <laughs> yeah. just part of the acting. Like, it's kind of like Miguel's hair, but, like, nicer. <laughs> Like, fuck you. <laughs> this is beautiful hair right now. Shit. Bro, I just compared you to Tom Hiddleston. You're on gracias, the spectrum gracias. with him. Or is it like, the Jewish version? Tom Hiddleston? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hiddleston. That's a variant right there. <laughs> or Word. that is a variant of Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> yeah, no, is but you Tom made... Hiddleston a Loki variant? Ooh. Damn. Pepe, Pepe, oh, no, 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 I'm dead. That's crazy. Yeah. Fuck. You know what? That should blew my mind. On that note, I'm gonna go think about what he just said, and I'm gonna do some writing on that. And also, gonna go finish fucking sweet tooth because we gotta talk about that shit soon, people. That's coming yes. up. So stay tuned for that. On that note, friends, countrymen, and lovers, love you guys. Always an honor. Always a pleasure. People, this is Chez. Yo, and people, and this is Miguel. We told you Enchantress right here, live, exclusive Max. LOC. Go Google this shit, read about it, and share the LOC love out there, people. Have a good one. That's Word. right. And I'm Rod. Go watch Loki episode one and two if you haven't already. And go watch In the Heights, um, currently playing in your local movie theater. Or HBO Max that we all love. Word. And then go walk through the heights. That'd be epic. Peace. Yeah. yeah. Later.